Hello, this is Kitties, and today we're going to learn how to use the game rules chip. First, we're going to need your maker pen. So pull that out. From there, look at your menu. Hit open palette. Hit gadgets. Make sure it's on game. And hit game rules. Then press your trigger to spawn it in. And now you have the game rules chip. Let's get started and see what this thing can do. Next, let's go over what you can do with the game rules chip. Open your maker pen menu and hit configure. And simply click on the game rules chip. Now you have 20 pages of stuff to edit. Let's see what each one does. First, the mode name. This will appear on the scoreboard up at the top. And it will also appear whenever the game starts. So for now, let's just turn it to tutorial. Hit OK. Next, let's look at manual game start. So, for the game to manually start being when someone pushes the button, there must be this many players, this many minimum teams, and this many minimum teams with this certain amount of players on it. For now, let's leave it at one, because it's just me here. Let's look at page two now. Now, let's look at what these do. Automatic game start is when, when these same requirements are met, being minimum player count, minimum team count, and minimum amount of people on a team, the game will auto start if this is checked. Next page. Now, look at these. These are voiceovers. I advise that you have this one off or else coach will be blasting your ears if there aren't enough people. This is when the game says ready to start or invite your friends to join you pre-game. This is when after the game ends it says the results. This is when there's a 10 second countdown that coach will say near the end. And the same thing for one minute, she will announce that. Show game mode notifications is when someone joins the game or something like that. Next page. And show player notifications in game. This will enable or disable notifications for players in game. The game start countdown duration is as soon as you hit the start button, how many seconds does it take for the game to start? I'm going to set it to five. And after the game end countdown duration, this is how long it takes for the game to be able to be started again. I'm going to set this to a 30. Respawn and game start. Respawn to add a spawn point whenever the game starts. Same thing for respawn and game over. For it to work on respawn on game over, open your palette. From there, good gadgets other gadgets and get a respawn point spawn it in it fell through the ground either way hit configure on a spawn point and make sure it says use at the end of the game check that box if you want to use it at the end of the game and that is how that setting works join in progress support is when someone can join the game if it's already mid game I recommend having this on if it's something silly. End game if start requirements not met. We discussed these earlier with the manual start. If someone either leaves the room and goes below this number or something happens where these criteria are not met, it will end the game if that box is checked. Team count. This changes how many teams are there. For now, let's keep it at two. Team size. This determines how many people are on each team. Team selection method. So if you want to have the game select the team after a game ends or someone joins mid-game, this is how the game will do it. So it'll randomly select the team. It can choose the smallest team, the largest team, or the team with the lowest score. I like smallest or lowest score so the game stays more balanced. Team changes during game supported. This allows players to switch teams during game. To do so, go to your watch, hit this room, hit setup, and game options. 
switch team. This allows you to switch team mid game. And if you want, you can have it respawn you on a spawn point if you change your team during the game. Explic team selection is supported. When you click this, it's like Rec Royale Squads. You click which team instead of just pressing a button. Show open slots on the scoreboard shows any open slots. You can turn that off and it's just whoever's in the room. Let's keep that on for now. Shuffle teams after your game is quite self-explanatory. After each game, it'll shuffle the teams. Team outfit supported is like paintball and dodgeball and laser tag, where you have a bit of a team jersey over you, that way your teammates know who you are. Teammate beacon method. That is similar to Rec Rowell, but what I like to do is revive available, so whenever they need to be revived, their beacon will show. Same thing could be for opponents. I like to do revive available also. They can see wherever people are if they're down. Team Radio Supporter is similar to Rec Royale Squads and Laser Tag. Let's check this out. First, the Team Radio Volume. I like to have mine at point 3. Next page. Now, you get to see how close people have to be for you to have the radio on and how close they have to be to exit the distance. I like to have both of these at 10. So if you get 10 meters away, the radio will start, and then if you get within 10 meters, it'll stop. Max health and max shield are good if you're making a PvP. I like to have my max health at 80, and max shield at 80. Suppress weapon damage. If you have this checked, weapons do not do damage to players. Auto heal is similar to laser tag, where if you don't take damage for enough time, you will start to heal. I like to have this enabled. The delay for auto heal is 3 seconds, therefore if you don't get hit for 3 seconds, you will start to auto heal, and it will take 5 seconds to auto heal. Auto respawn is where, after a certain amount of time, you will respawn. Auto respawn delay is how long it takes for it to spawn, so let's set this to 8 seconds. Restore health on respawn is highly recommended to be on, unless if you're doing something manually. This allows it so that whenever you respawn, you will also have all your health back. Respawn invincibility is how long you are invincible for whenever you spawn, therefore you cannot get hit. I like to have this at 2.5. Next page. Revive mode is similar to the quests and laser tag and rec Royale. You can have it off. On high five or on handshake. I like to have mine on handshake so it's not instant. Revive required delay. This is similar to laser tag where it takes a certain amount of time for you to be able to be revived. I do not like this on but in this case we'll do 0.5 seconds. Max revive health normalized and minimum revive health normalized. This allows you to change the amount of health you have whenever you get revived. I'm, I like to leave these at point one. And then the multiplier. I also like to leave this at point one. That way they have little health whenever they spawn. Pick up equipment on revive is similar to the quest and laser tag where whenever you get revived, you automatically pick up your equipment. It is also seen in Rick Rail squads. Reviver invincibility and then revive e invincibility. Person who revived the other person, invincibility duration, and the person who just got revived, invincibility duration. Let's go to the next page. Next is the handshake revive required duration. This is how long you must handshake another player to revive if your revive is set to handshake. I like to have mine on two seconds. Team friendly fire enabled, that allows you to friendly fire your teammates. Only check this if you're mean. Just kidding. It can be useful in some scenarios. HUD enabled allows you to have a health bar, score, and a timer. I like to have this on so you can see your health and shield. Opponent health bar, this allows you to see your opponent's health bar above their head. Teammate health bar, 
it allows you to see your teammates' health bars above their head. For both of these, it only shows when they're damaged. And teammate health bar always visible is similar to Rec Royale squads, where you can see their health bar whenever. Grayscale effect went out. When you're out in something like paintball, all you see is black and white. You can also turn this off. Damage red flash effect is when you get a bit of a red ring around your head, similar to when this happens. This is similar to Rec Rail. Let's go back to settings. The feedback options give you feedback whenever this event happens, like a hit, a revive, a downed, or a downed opponent. Down teammate makes that really loud sound like in quest when a teammate gets down. This chooses where you spawn. I like to have it set the team, but you can use cycle where it prefers the least recently used spawn point, a random spawn point, a spawn point that opponents cannot see, or close to your team and away from opponents. I like to have that one selected. Then you choose what you spawn with. They auto to spawn, so don't worry about ink. I like to have mine set to a paint pistol, similar to paintball. Next page. Now let's look at these options. Reset equipment on game start. Resets any equipment to its spawn point when the game starts. Broken equipment, like the Lost Skulls weapons. You can have it respawn at a lot spawn point. You can hide it and will respawn at the next start of the game. Or completely destroy it forever. I like to have mine set to respawn. Infinite reserve ammunition. This gives infinite ammo to the power weapons for the laser tag, being the laser launcher and the beam cannon. Unequipped item ring effect. This is when there's an item on the ground. It'll give it a ring if you can pick it up. Out of bound restrictions are similar to something like quests, where if you're out of bounds, it'll start a countdown until you're out. I don't like to have this on, as it can be a bit finicky at times. Low priority is useful if you're having multiple game chips in one area. Let's clone these. Hit the clone button on your Maker Pen menu. And simply clone our tutorial. And another one. So we know which one is which. Let's rename them all. So we'll have this one set to 1. This one set to 2. And this one set to 3. Now we change the low priorities. A 1. A 2. And a 3. This chooses what order to come in in this menu. So what we do here is to switch the game mode, which this also works for many other modes in Rec Room. Simply look at the mode that's selected and click it. This is changing the game mode. And those are the basics to the game rule ship. I hope you enjoyed, and I also hope this helps you.